Hi, good morning. Good morning, everyone. So welcome to our very first ever book launch webinar titled Making Your Millions in Reads by our Reads Guru, none other than Mr. Gabriel Yap, who needs no introduction. So our webinar today is going to be a short and sweet one, a webinar book launch event. So our book has actually uh, launched since about a year back, but we have not been able to do any physical event. So this is the very, very first book launch webinar. So, all right, just to share that, the agenda for today is just going to be an hour where we'll start with an icebreaker session for about just five, 10 minutes. So we will have three books giveaways. And right after the icebreaker session where we give away three prizes of three books, making your millions in reads, we will start Gabriel sharing on his book. And then we'll follow by the Q&A and that's the end. It's a very short and sweet session. And we can write your Q&A on the Q&A chat box. Okay, just send by a second device to start our icebreaker session. We will be giving away three books, making your millions in reads. And here you go. <laughs> so I know most of y'all would have Gabriel's books by now since it's been launched a year back. But this is the very first time we had the a book launch webinar since we can't have a physical event yet. So you may already have the books, but if you happen to win the books, you can always give it as a Chinese New Year present. What a best gift for Valentine's and for the rest of 2022, the Water Tiger year. So do have a second device prepared right now. I'm going to share screen and go into menti.com. Just hold on. Let me share screen. Okay, let's see who has dropped in. Waiting for players. Okay, you just need to log into menti.com. Okay, so I will start the game right now. Okay, I'm so fast to get more points. What was Jeff Bezos' first job? Yes, newspaper delivery boy, a pastry chef, or a cook at McDonald's. Okay, the fastest fingers will get more points. Let's see how you did it. Wow, so that's the quite equivalent 635. And the winner is cooked at McDonald's. Five people answered correctly. Let's see the score points. Question number two. The fastest will get more points, okay? What was Warren Buffett's first job? Is a grocery store clerk? Newspaper delivery boy, or he was a teacher. Three to one, time's up. Let's see whether you get it right. Wow, everybody guessed, most of you guessed correctly. He's a newspaper delivery boy. So all of you must be fans of uh, Warren Buffett. So let's see who's the top three again. So CJ is the winner. Thank you so much once again. So I will bring in Gabriel very soon right now. Good morning, everyone. Sinan Kuala. I also have one question for you. That is, ladies and gentlemen, if you just sit back, ask yourself, what is the first stop that you make a million dollars on? Yes. Let me just repeat the question. What is the first stop that you made one million dollars profit on. Well, I know some of you are still scratching your head. Okay, I'm wearing a hat, which I normally wear in my Melbourne home. Uh, yes, we still live in Melbourne for the last 13 years now. Um, and as a matter of fact, the reason why I wrote this book, Making Your Millions Beats, is very simple. As I've mentioned earlier, uh, there is really no secret in making money from reads. Okay, so we are very curious why there are other people teaching read courses, charging $1,000, asking you to resort to your skill development fund to fund it. For us, we have been teaching and preaching reads for the last 33 years. Yes, 33 years now. Because one of the reasons why I wrote this book is that I made my millions in reads there. And then we will share with you essentially uh, which is the uh, questions that we can answer. 
Okay, so let me just go ahead now. All right, uh, to this, I'm just going to answer in the next half an hour. This is the cost outline. There is really no secret in making millions from leads. Okay, so don't be snooked by people who want to sell you expensive courses on REITs. REITs is as simple as an understanding real estate. And if you're an agent or you are actually a non-Asian, you are if you invest internationally or you just invest domestically, real estate is as fundamental in any kind of investment as it can be. Okay. Now then the second thing I want to actually go through with you is to how do we hunt for good REITs in our investment portfolio. Underlying this concept is very simple in the sense that do not waste time on poor REITs, bad REITs, or REITs that are trading at ugly prices because they're wasting your time, they're draining your psychology, they make you depressed. When you're depressed psychologically, as humans, we are affected, we will then make bad decisions. And this is what we at GCP Global teach in our classes, how to avoid this, okay? So, and then I will share in the last part, my personal investment mm -hmm. journey in investing in REITs. In fact, it is actually encapsulated in my book. You know, just one example on Fraser Center for My Trust, where I was one of the top 20 shareholders mm -hmm. for a long, long time, since its IPO in 2006 up to now. But of course, the periodic times when I actually sell the stock, you know, and as well as my continual classes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our approach, as you can see, you know, stands for my background, okay? Now, as you can see, way back in 1992, I actually lecture for renowned institutions like Monetary Authority of Singapore, mm -hmm. the Singapore Stock Exchange, Asian Development Bank, many of the regional banks and central banks. And as you know, many of them have several well funds and I actually do lecture for many of them. So you notice, therefore, our approach investments is very thorough and very methodical and very in-depth. And this is what we bring to our REITs classes, which we have been teaching for the last 33 years. Okay, so it is actually knowing your details very well that you will notice that any whims, any nuances, any changes in REITs or other investment instruments, you know, like for example, Jeff Bezos, Amazon, you know, which got smashed, you know, just the day before by 7%. <clears throat> then after Amazon reported results, the share price shot up 15%. Within a day, ladies and gentlemen, if you have just bought a thousand shares, just a thousand shares, you are up by uh, more than a hundred thousand in terms of profit. That is the underlying profitability of the US tech stocks. And that's actually another area that we have specialized in for the last 33 years. Okay. Um, the, you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that we have been quoted many a times. This is an interview that I give or, or in the business times, as you can see the date, it is way back on November 1st, 2009. Okay. This is me. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, then I was still wearing a hat. Then I was, I look like that. I look like that now. Have I aged? This was actually 209. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that I hope I have not aged much. Okay, maintain the same. Simply because I'm happy. Why am I happy? Other than my beautiful wife that you have met, all my family. Okay, I'm happy. You understand that you can make money. How can you do it? Um, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we do not uh, bet it. Uh, bet big, okay? So, uh, but to bet big in our timing is one of the best ways to be, right? So essentially, the uh, this talks about the statistics of shareholding of Center Point Trust, you know, and Ascenders in India Trust, okay? So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, this is my Fraser Center Point Trust, where I'm the largest shareholder as number 16, and this is Ascendis in their trust, okay? Of course, in our classes, we share the reasons why, when, and why we continue to hold these stocks a big position uh, or a small position. 
So as I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, you know, one of the key things that we focus on in GCP Global in our classes is when to bet big, because the right timing will actually put you in a position to buy the REITs at the best price. And you notice that psychologically being humans, if we buy a REIT at the wrong price, or the volatility is just too much for your character, you notice that essentially it will go down and it will actually cause you more pain than anything else. Okay, so in our journey, ladies and gentlemen, which is documented by the Straits Times, Business Times, even Taobao, which we share our methodology in, in detail, right? Uh, it's very academic, very thorough. So similarly, because we lecture for the various banks, various hedge funds, various institutions for the last 33 years. So we are very cognizant of what we say. Everything that we present is very well researched, you know, so that you can make a good decision, the best decision, the best timing decision, okay? So once again, ladies and gentlemen, after doing our homework in in very detailed way, you know, we notice that that's how we establish big positions. So for example, for Fraser Center Point Trust, based on the annual report in 2019, you know, my stake then was 2.12 million shares, which in my classes then I've mentioned, as well as in my book, right? I've got them below the 80 cents level, and then I sold them off first time when it hit $3, then it actually pulled back again during the COVID-19 at 160, and that's where I went in again, and when it went back up to um, 260 in uh, just last year, August, I sold everything. Okay. So if you take 260 on 2 million shares, we're talking about $5 million in detail. Okay. Now, send this. India Trust is the same thing. I'm listed as one of their top 20 shareholders as the third year running, you know, as their major shareholder. So at 1.67 million shares, multiplied by the share price of about 130 currently, it's worth roughly about close to $3 million. Okay, this is what we meant, right, by actually having substantive stakes because when you move up, you can actually make millions in it. All right. So, of course, in our classes, we share with you the reasons why we enter the stock. Okay. And one of the key things that we have learned over the years is this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one of the funds that I use to service is actually the Quantum Fund, which run by George Soros. Actually, when I was working in Wall Street then, from 1996 to 1998, the person running the fund was actually no longer George Soros. It was actually his right-hand man. Stanley Drunken Miller, who's actually one of the smartest person. And right now he still runs the Cortez Fund. And one of the things that I've learned from them is to know when to go for the jugular. The jugular is the vein on your neck. So you must know when to go technically for the kill. Okay, so you can do that for stocks, especially when they are sell down sharply. And of course, having a good understanding of psychological aspects of the market. This is where we are able to share this with you. All right. So, for example, if you want to look at my video, now, if you go to YouTube, you notice we have a lot of videos under Gabriel. Yeah. For example, I've shared how I made a thousand percent. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 10 times on my tech investment. So, in this article, in this video, I've actually highlighted Alphabet, which I actually established a position way back in 2012. Okay, so for well, a series of all the stocks, the investments, the timing, do, do go to our YouTube video as well as attend our classes. And needless to say, do actually get our book, all right? It's in there because it established the principles of making money on that. <clears throat> so, our next tech class, if you're interested, ladies and gentlemen, is actually on the 19th of March, okay? And it's entitled Investing Profitability in the Fangs, which is actually Facebook, Alphabet, <coughs> Microsoft, <coughs> Apple, Microsoft, Google, as well as others uh, where uh, like the chip companies are like AMD, um, Intel, you know, Micron, you know, and last year we made it big on EVs, electric vehicles like Rivian. But of course, essentially, these stocks are highly volatile. So that's why we have a class in detail. 
to get actually guide you through because you can double or triple, but at the same time, you also can lose you know, money on these stocks as what Facebook or Meta has actually shown in their latest results on Wednesday. The underlying volatility is so sharp, so fast, that a lot of people get confused. But ladies and gentlemen, most of the time, investors are confused because, why? Because we are perturbed, right? We are affected by sharp rises or sharp movement of stock prices. But really, sharp movement of stock prices is just one aspect of investment, okay? Knowing the basic business fundamentals is far more important to derive its intrinsic long-term value. It's far more important than actually knowing the, how the stock price moves. But being human, we are affected by both, right? In fact, when you are affected by one, you will be biased towards your understanding of the long-term fundamentals. And that's where we try to focus both. We try to give you the best in our classes. Back to today's uh, topic, right? Essentially, our approach in teaching investment is, as I've mentioned earlier, we are thorough, we're very methodical, we are very in-depth. And then we concentrate a lot on when to go in for the kill, so to speak. But as you know, and as I've shown earlier, we do not establish what we call kacang pute uh, positions in stocks. Okay, if you're just out to make a few thousand dollars, I think don't bother, right? Because investments is not about that. If you want to become wealthy, ladies and gentlemen, as of what I've shared in my book, Making Your Millions, it's watching the market closely as what we've been doing for the last 33 years, knowing when to go in and having the courage to go in big. And more importantly, to hold on to your investments, you know, despite so much noises in the market. So in our classes, we actually help you to decipher on that. Help you to tell you which are the unnecessary noise that are affecting your market decisions and what are the key focus that you should be looking at. Okay, right. So with our eclectic experience serving a lot of fund managers, hedge fund managers, our working in Wall Street and as my books mentioned, you know, I was head of institutional sales for a couple of uh, broking houses and financial institutions before I retired. And uh, I was also young, probably Singapore's youngest head of research at the age of 27 years old, way back, I think, in 1992 or 1993. Okay, so we come with all the necessary experience. Okay, and we still enjoy that because, you know, making money is, I don't know how to tell you, it's, a, it's a, one of the most joyous, uh, uh, joyous joy that one can bring. But more importantly is that once you actually make this money, willing to at least share it with a lot of people. If you look at GCP Global web page or Facebook page, you notice that every year we donate money. In fact, our principal partner is Charities Foundation of Singapore, where they operate under Food Bank Singapore, Science Science Fund. If you notice in our Facebook page, we contribute and give money to these institutions especially during COVID-19. And their thank you letters from this institution are actually based on our Facebook page, okay? We don't want to actually proclaim it, you know, because we don't want to be boasting because it's a matter of giving. But the whole idea that you, is that you can only give well if you can make money well. And that's what we do in our classes. To teach you, to be able to do that if you are already not doing that. And ladies and gentlemen, to celebrate this, of course, you know, uh, I've been postponing the live uh, book launch, but I guess I can't uh, postpone anymore because the Chinese version of this book, of my book, you know, is being published, right? And is published in Simplified Mandarin, which means that it can be sold in China. The biggest pub book publisher in China, Citic uh, Publishing, you know, has published the Chinese version of my, this book, which means that it's available in all countries, including the US, and you want to actually buy the Chinese version for your friends or yourself, just go to jd.com, okay? You can actually get this book and it'll be delivered to your footsteps, okay? Now, the next thing I want to share with you is the why incorporate REITs in your portfolio. It's very simple, ladies and gentlemen, okay? One of the reasons why I've written my book is because 
you can make millions in REITs. And what's I've devoted chapter nine, for example, to talk about essentially uh, how I navigated, held on, uh, and bought into Fraser Center Point Trusts, you know, uh, to uh, uh, since its IPO, when to sell them, when it hit above three dollars, when to buy back again at one sixty, and when to actually question the management where they make huge acquisitions like Waterway Point, you know, they are. Assets like Alkang Mall, Century Square from uh, PGM uh, portfolio, right? So of course, as I've mentioned in my book again, as well as what we teach in our classes, we're always very skeptical of REIT managers trying to sell you, you know, what we call sell koyo, right? Uh, when they make big acquisitions, they will tell you that it's going to be good, great, graphically, uh, well represented you know, actually enhance long-term value. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that may be true, but as a sharp rate investor, will you basically be able to ask yourself, no, whether that once that acquisition goes through, which is financed by either very cheap value uh, placements done at private, privately, or done by a, uh, by, uh, 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 fundraising rights, via rights issue, uh, that will lead to severe dilution. So essentially, you notice that during the crisis as of two years ago, and in my past video, if you go to my latest video, I've talked about why REITs have registered the worst month you know, for a long, long time in January. That was just last month. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, you can see that the, this is the, how the market is. Okay, you, this are the stock market decline in the last decade alone. You can see that almost every year, right, there is an opportunity where the market decline and therefore REITs get whacked at the same time. Okay, now this is even more opportune because you actually have a situation where the Fed is about to increase interest rates. In fact, First one's going to come in March of this year. Whether it's going to be four, five, or six interest rates increases this year, how will the REITs market affect it? We go back and study the last rate increases between 2004 to 2006, as well as the last recent one between 2015 to 2018, and how the REITs actually affect it. Of course, this incorporates a few hours of analysis, and that's why we have clusters to run there. As you can see, these gentlemen, even the press tells us, you know, uh, and profile us that we donate our earnings. You know, in fact, for all the classes that we've been conducting for the last 33 years, a portion, in fact, a major portion, especially uh, during COVID-19, 100% of the proceeds that we earned, you know, we donate to the charity. And our simple philosophy is this, right? Because we make our money from REITs, okay? And making money from REITs is not that difficult. You don't need to be too smart. In fact, if you think you're too smart and trying to be too complicated, that's where you end up losing money, right? So having the goodwill from God, you know, I think we basically just want to donate and give to God what we think his, uh, his uh, mission for us on earth, okay? So I don't want to dwell too much. Otherwise, uh, you know, but you can read through it yourself okay so this is again you know what we have been profiled right uh, our charity uh, that we have done in the last few decades okay now the underlying our class ladies and gentlemen and what we look for in all our classes is to pick as read winners in fact if you read at the gcp global website which you can see here right you go to https global Wixsite.com, GCP Global Vlogs, you can see that for every month we have publications and every year without fail we pick the S read winners for each year. And it's 2018, 2019, 2021. And one of the things that we notice is that, and we have empirical evidence to establish that the big S read winners year after year are the ones that give you DPU accretive acquisitions, where these acquisitions really enhance the DPU of the REIT. 
So which are these reads? That's what we will go through in our class next week. Okay. So this is our class for next week, ladies and gentlemen. That is to position and to buy into the best reads for the current year. Okay, so feel free to join us for our classes where we will explain in detail all the reads where we talk about the winners, we talk about the those reads that should not be in the portfolio. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, psychologically as humans, we will be affected when there are bad swings in the read prices of those reads in the portfolio, we will be affected. When we are affected emotionally, psychologically, we will make bad decisions automatically, right? So this will then affect your choice of good reads in your portfolio. So we, in our classes, help you to cut off the apron string you know, between yourself and the bad reads, okay? So we don't see the fences. We tell you whether the reads are right for a run or something, it is actually going right for a route. If it's right for a route, this is where you should be cutting off and throwing the bad apples away. As simple as that, okay? Um, you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that we have been quoted very, um, uh, uh, quite, regularly in the press, you know, on the big issues on REITs. So the latest issues basically is that as REIT mergers have been value destructive. So you have seen, for example, you know, ESR REIT <coughs> merger with Viva Trust previously, OUE Commercial Trust together with OUE Hospitality Trust, Escort Residential Trust and Ascenders Hospitality Trust, Fraser Lock and Fraser Commercial, for capital land malls and capital commercial. And right now we are looking at between Maple Tree Commercial and Maple Tree NEC and ESR together with together with uh, 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 ARA logos. Okay. In fact, afterwards we may have a Q and A. Uh, depending on how the Q and A goes, if not, I will pose you one particular question where you are again have a chance to win our book if you get the question correct. Okay, so uh, you can see ladies and gentlemen therefore that uh, even just uh, last week we were quoted on the front page of Business Times when the market actually fell sharply, right? And you can see that last week was practically blurred on the streets last week, right? And as you can see, you know, the, from the headlines, regional markets fall as the Fed signals and increased rate high. For GCP Global students who attended our classes, you know that we have four more new and we have actually preempted you on this more than half a year ago. In fact, if you look at our videos, YouTube videos, you can see that that's been the case. And if you've been attending our classes, you notice that you have been shielded and protected from this. Okay, so what I was quoted was this again. I mean, every time a market goes down these days, the press will always be zeroing on whether it's going to be a bad market, you know. So, we, based on our experience, our thorough analysis, you know, what I said was this, right? That interest rates increases a load. In fact, for the last few recessions since the day or since the year in which the Dow was created, that's way back in 1898, that means more than 125 years ago, have been led to bear markets. That means interest rates alone increases, not even during the 70s. If we do remember, ladies and gentlemen, in the 70s, you know, was where, you know, the interest rates went to as high as 20%, just before Ronald Reagan came to become the president in 1980. You know, so the early part of the 1970s was when oil price shot up to $80, you notice that essentially that caused havoc in the market. But if you are a good investor or trader, this is the best time to try on volatility. You can still make big money. It's what George Soros quantum fund did during the 1970s. Okay, so, um, so for those of you who can join us for our class, do join us. If not, then you can still follow us on our weekly um, yes, weekly YouTube videos. So some of the recent YouTube videos I have actually is what's wrong with Maple Tree Commercial Trust and Maple Tree NAC merger. This video has actually hit close to about 3,000 views. I thank so many people who have been subscribers 
and supporting us on this. Do sign up. In fact, we're running a promotion now that if you sign up to become a subscriber on our YouTube channel under Gabriel Lia, right? Do send us your, your name, your contact details at GCP to GCP Global, uh, to our email rather, right? At GCP Global SG at gmail.com. When you recommend a friend to become a subscriber and tell us the name of your friend, you know, who is a subscriber. So then at the end of each month, we will pick a lucky draw, you know, a winner, right? So our last video also addresses, you know, the worst read market, you know, since crash, you know, of last week. Okay, next week, of course, we have another interesting one. Okay, so do stay tuned and subscribe to our channel. Okay, so, um, so thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for question and answer. Now, for those of you who have more questions, please type in your questions, right? And uh, we can actually have uh, a very lively session. That's what we do in our classes, right? As you can see earlier on, you have uh, uh, the interesting episode where my wife played games. You, you notice that, ladies and gentlemen, making your millions in reads is not just so serious as what I do sound serious, right? But yes, making money is a serious matter. But at the same time, you can have fun doing it. And then when you make your money, you can also then contribute to your charity. Like that's what we hope to establish more and more of y'all like us so that the world will be a better place. Okay. First and foremost, Mervyn, thanks for the uh, question and happy new year. Um, Mervyn say, hi, Gabriel. I noticed that your REITs investment show is only in Singapore. May I know why? REITs in Australia, Hong Kong, US wasn't considered for your choice. Well, <clears throat> there are, in our classes, ladies and gentlemen, Mervyn, we actually go through all the REITs investments, okay, in detail, uh, not only just my holdings, but the key REITs that will perform well current year, next year in key markets, you know. So for example, last year alone, Singapore REIT market did badly. In fact, we were down 6%. But guess what? The US REIT market did very well. It was up 23%. And guess what? The sector pick that we've shown in our GCP global classes, the data centers, like the public storage, you know, uh, uh, the, the public storage REITs, you know, essentially were the ones that did very well. And this is the ones that we picked in our classes. Okay. So of course, for this half an hour session, uh, it is... Uh, Difficult to show you everything, but do join us for our classes. We'll go through in detail, uh, not only just one, but a series of them. Mm -hmm. That's why we've been doing these quarterly love classes for the last 33 years. So the next questions come from uh, CJ. CJ asks, hi, Gabriel. Interest rates and inflation is trending higher now. And how many local rates responded negatively for now? What are your views on this? Thanks for the question, CJ. Uh, again, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, the these questions were preempt and forewarned to GCP Global students more than half a year ago, right? So the interest rates moving up and inflation therefore resulting, right, is not new to the REIT market. Since the REIT market started in the US in 1960, yes, from 1960 to now, 2022, we're talking about 62 years. So whether it's actually the major REIT market in in a in a US uh, and then Australia in 1971, Japan in 2001, Singapore in 2002, historically REITs have reacted, you know, when interest rates move up. But guess what? While if you think that interest rates suppress the performance of REITs, then you are wrong, CJ. You know, in fact. The last two cycles are shown to GCP Global students between 2004 to 2006. And then in uh, 2018, uh, or rather 2015, 2016, where both years we have one rate increases in the month of December. Then in 2017 and 2018, where three rate increases, you know, before the Fed hit about 2.5%. And that's where the rate market didn't perform, right? But in 2017, the REIT market in Singapore went up 32%. It was only in 2018 where it was quite lackadaisical after three rate increases, 
when essentially the uh, um, of the top 10 reads that did well, in fact, only three of them posted positive returns for that year 2018. But guess what? In 2019, when the Fed ceased and stopped its rate increases, right? Uh, that means the year before the pandemic, right? The, in 2019, the REIT market in Singapore turned out to be the one of the best performing years, where it was up 19%. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, when um, it is intuitive and human you know, to think that interest rates will work its way into REITs and impact REITs negatively. That's what the media like to actually uh, uh, sell you the story. But at GCP Global, we always tell our students that we like to know what the media thinks, but not what the media or not what many of the not so smart analysts tell you is correct, right? Because in the first place, when we have inflation, right? Or in this case, it's higher than expected inflation. That's why you are having earlier interest rate increases earlier and the number of increases, which was actually supposed to be until the second half of this year, this was in the minutes of the Fed in September last year. Now they're looking at three, four rate increases for this year, right? So in fact, there's also a talk about possible 50 basis point hike in March, you know, but I don't really think you know, that this is the consensus view right now. But we did tell you that you know, in the throughout tra the trajectory, REITs market will be rock at the beginning of this interest rate adjustment, okay? Once after that, then you notice that REITs have rising power, right? So in an inflation environment, it means that GDP is doing well. That's why you need interest rates to curb this interest, this GDP of faster than expected growth. This means that REITs, therefore, or asset owners yourself, yourself, if you're owning REITs as well, then you notice these are the ones that have rising power, they can raise rental. Okay, so REITs in the long term, as the episode, the last two rate cycles have shown, you know, have actually done well during periods of rate increases, except for adjustment in the earlier part of the interest rate cycle. Hopefully that answers you clearly. Sean asks, Gabriel, given the recent pullback in REITs, have you seen any stabilization in the REITs market now? Um, Sean, once the uh, REITs actually pull back, you know, for example, some of the big REIT names, if you look at my YouTube video, I've talked about MCT being smashed, MLT being smashed, Capital DC being smashed, right? The center's REIT being smashed. So in our class next week, we are going to talk about which are the REITs that are actually right for bargain. Okay, so uh, on a broadly basis, there are a few things that I've been watching clearly to help Sean to actually uh, answer whether things are stabilizing, right? So the first thing we watch closely is the CBOE volatility index. So that volatility index shot above 20 last week when uh, the, uh, the uh, markets went into a higher volatility mode. In fact, it hit a high of as high as 37, right? Before it started to pull back since last Friday. And as, as of yesterday, it's down back to below 25. Now, this phenomena was last seen in the period between 19 February 2020 and 23rd of March 2020. This was when we discovered that the pandemic leading to a closure, right, leading to lockdowns is going to affect the world. And that's where markets sold off at that time. S&P sold off 37%. Our REITs markets sold off 54% then and there. So that's the first thing you watch, the CBOE volatility index. The second thing is, of course, the 10-year bond yield. The 10-year bond yield last night, as you can see, it went up to 1.918% because of the better than expected employment numbers. It came in at four, six, seven thousand jobs compared to the market consensus of only 125,000. Of course, essentially, the how it moves later on is another thing. Okay, uh, so the consensus now, of course, is that it will hit 2%. So the market probably has discounted a 2% 10 year bond yield. But more importantly, gentlemen, I want also, and something that I'll point out in next Saturday's class, is the fact that is 
the yield curve inverting because mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. episode alone, you notice that 10-year bond has moved from 1.51% at the beginning of the year now to 1.917. So today is 5th February, right? So uh, end of last year was 31st. Uh, that was like one month, five days ago. Okay, so for it to shoot up 40 over basis points in a short period of time, you know, can create enormous volatility. And that's why we prepare our GCP Global students in our past investment classes for this. But more importantly, also the two-year bond yield in the US has also gone up, right? From like 0.2% uh, now to about 0.2%, which means therefore, if you take the 10-year minus the two-year, you know, it's becoming narrower. So if you do a 10-year, two-year bond yield, uh, chart, you notice that that's being narrow. In fact, in our classes next week, we show that in detail. Okay, so hopefully I do answer your question, Sean, on this. Hi, Gabriel, when, when will you write the book, How to Make Millions in U.S. China Tax Storm? Um, very good question, nonetheless, you know, because this is something that we've been doing all this years, okay, because um, uh, if you read, for example, our uh, website that is at GCP Global website, you notice that I've shared earlier that I've made 10 times or 1,000% uh, on Alphabet. Okay, there are a few other stocks that I have in my portfolio. Um, the US portfolio, that's basically the facts, right? Of course, this quarter, my profits on Facebook has come down, you know, because of the recent set of results. But it's not something that you have not seen before because during the second half of 201, we ate because of the Cambridge Analytica problem, as well as the uh, warning on the second quarter results, you know, at that time, uh, the Facebook also took a dive by about 37% then and there. And if you have won in and buy in a big way, you can actually make good money. Okay, so essentially, um, in the, for tech itself, you know, uh, this month alone has started very well for me, you know, because other than uh, Amazon shooting up well, and Google or Alphabet, you know, giving a bonus of 20 for one is unheard of in Singapore, right? In Singapore, you have <clears throat> rather crap companies, for example, like Raffles Education, you know, consolidating three shares for one share, and yet the share price can actually fall 95%. So how to lose money in Singapore shares is the clear opposite of how to make solid money and millions in US tech shares, okay? So for me, Google has been very good this month, and earlier this uh, the first week of this year, you know, uh, when Microsoft actually launched takeover on Activision Blizzard, the share price shot up from like $60 to $95, the offer price, but I settled about $90. But uh, for those of you who are attending our tech classes, you know, there's Activision Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, Electronic Art, as well as Take Two and Zenic, you know, are the four stocks that we like in the gaming sector. And gaming sector is a sector that we love a lot, okay, even though I'm not a gamer, all right? So hopefully that answers your questions. And then, um, hi, Gabriel, could you share your views on inflation and REIT sectors that will perform best in this environment? And I'm thinking industrial REITs would outperform best due to more greater inventory stocking. Is that right way to think about this? Uh, Chris, yes, you're partly correct. Uh, other than what we will show in our classes, you know, how the cap rates, how the valuation ratios of the REITs have changed or will change based on their latest set of results, right? You will notice that essentially some of them are actually well prepared for that. You know, let me give an example. ARA logos, you notice that they are, they are industrial REITs portfolio. Uh, they are valuing many of the uh, REITs portfolio now at a cap ratio of less than 5%. Now, boy, you know, we when we first went to live in Melbourne and we're still living there for the last 14 years, you can easily get cap rates of industrial properties, the same kind, huh? the same location that ARA logos are actually in, you know, even though we live in Victoria, right? Closer to about 10 to 12%. <clears throat> now you're getting less than 5%. So when we look at analysis like that, Right, we noticed that one of the key tenets that Warren Buffer has taught, that is margin of safety is not there for ARA logos itself, okay? But so when we look at, for example, the latest acquisition of MLT, you know, basically it's 
15 properties in Vietnam, as well as actually in China, as well as the 4% one in Japan. Then of course, in our classes, we warn of this, right, to our investor students. That's why many of investor students stay out of the placement on MLT, you know, both the private placement as well as actually the institutional, uh, the, as well as actually the rights issue. And now we are, have been able to buy it below the prices because institutional placement was done at 188. <clears throat> the the, uh, the uh, preferential rights issue was done at 184 and the share price now is 169. So we are getting a good bucket. So if you attend our classes, you get gems like this, okay? Hi, Gabriel. Will Fed rates and Treasury Hill uh, bill rate hit 2%? How do you position your rates and do you risk off? Oh, it's easy because we already have been preparing our students that the Treasury yield rate, Treasury bill rate, you know, is number one, intrinsically very volatile. Meaning that in October of uh, 2020 to March of uh, 2021, that means in a period of five months, that 10 year bond yield shot up from 0.66% to 1.7% last year. So you notice there was a mini sell off last year, right? So we preempted that. So this time around, you can see the 10 year shot up from 1.51 to 1.96 yesterday. So over a period of just one month, five days. Again, we preempted that. So we are actually also prepping that fact that the 10 year bond yield may shoot up to 2.5%, right? So um, this kind of movement will actually rock any REITs portfolio, but each incremental rocking of the road, boat will be lesser in terms of its impact going forward. Because one, the market is a forward discounting mechanism, right? In our classes, we will then, with this macro backdrop, we'll show you the various prices of the REITs that we think. Those are the ones that already have been sold off to the maximum value, which we think are right for your choosing. And those that are still good, but will still have some downside to go. That's what we show you in detail in our classes. Uh, the next question is, hi Gabriel, are you invested in REITs? In fact, I, I am uh, the top 20 shareholder of quite a few REITs, including AIT, mm -hmm. uh, Ascendance India Trust, Appraisal Center Point Trust, you know, um, uh, but of course, for Fraser Center Point Trust, when we go in uh, with $6 million in just one particular REIT, we sold it off and took our profits when it hit uh, $3 in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in January of 2020. When it came down back to 160 uh, during the pandemic sell-off, and then it went up to 260 again in August this year, we sold it off. This is actually documented and in our YouTube videos, as well as what we share in our quarterly REITs classes with our students. Should we vote against MCT and MNAC merger? Do take a look at my, uh, at my uh, YouTube video on that. Do send us the question later on, you know, so that we can actually answer you in detail because uh, we did point it out as what we have just said here. It's, it seems that the sponsor interest is not aligned with the minorities. This is why we came out with the video and now when the video came, you notice that's where MCT got sold off from $2 in December last year down to $181 currently. Okay, that happened on the first week or the second week of this year. And that's where our video came out. Okay, right. So uh, any last questions? If not, maybe I'll have one question for you to give away the last book. Okay, right. Uh, I'll have one last Yes, one last question. Two more okay. questions. Um, uh, Gabriel, is currency risk ever a consideration for you when choosing a read? Of course, Chris, you know, in fact, tax is a big issue, you know, that's why you notice that while during the timber boom, you know, when we actually entered a read called Weihing House in the US, it shot up because timber shortage, you know, was huge, you know, I think the trading code is WE in, uh, you know, so, but if you are a Singaporean, residing in Singapore or Australia and receiving dividend from the REITs in the US like Wissinghauer or Simon Properties, you'll be taxed 30%, it's very high, mm -hmm. okay, withholding, right? So 
I went for a trade. They don't hold it for too long. Okay. Uh, the dividends are good, but of course not as good in Singapore. You know, but it's the capital returns is tremendous. And also, for example, like office properties over there, at Empire Office Trust, you can make a lot of money on that. In fact, the other, if you read my book as well as attend my classes, you notice that I'm also very, very optimistic on both Chinese REITs as well as Indian REITs. But which are the ones to be choosing? When to go in? This is something that we share in detail in our classes. Okay, maybe I'll just finish the last question from AAA. Say, are you bearish on FCT now, selling at 160? Um, look, Miss uh, AA, you know, we are basically traders, uh, we are basically investors. You know, when uh, the quote Keynes, you know, is that when the facts change, you know, we change. Okay, so in our classes, we share, you know, why we turn bearish at you know, 260, but we can also turn positive, you know, when it hit 220 for Fraser Center Point Trust because, you know, that's where it has actually come down by a lot. Okay, so in our classes, we can then show evidence because what we say, what we forecast, what we anticipate is always based on solid evidence, right? Because our trade is that we teach for the big sovereign funds, we teach for big institutions, we teach for the hedge funds, and they then, as well as we take big positions, okay? So we don't just say for fun, ladies and gentlemen, okay, we back up with evidence. And when you do all this severe, homework in detail, that's where you bet big and make your millions. So my last question for you, Lee for you to win the last book is this, okay? Now, contrary to uh, media reports, the pending merger of ESRV and ARA logos is a beneficial merger of minority shareholders. Can you, therefore, in the next five minutes, okay, tell me, can you give me three solid quantitative or qualitative reasons why the merger will be beneficial? I will accept any reasonably crafted answers. Then I will tell you whether you can win or can win. Anybody? Coming now, four minutes. Okay, just to repeat, okay? Now we can see, ladies and gentlemen, that a lot of uh, press media, in fact, just two weeks ago, right, uh, the, this company called ISS, Institutional uh, Shareholder Services, say that they think that, you know, the, the, uh, <clears throat> um, the merger between ARE logos and ESR, you know, uh, is not in due process. It's very interesting because what do you mean by due process? Because ARE logos and ESR, both CEOs have come up and say that they follow the same process as advised by the lawyers, as well as actually followed by the other reads in your previous mergers. But do they have a point? This is something that's interesting, okay? So essentially, our question today is gonna ask you that, you know, uh, do you share that view from ISS or do you think, you know, that this will be beneficial? For me, of course, I think it will be beneficial. Of course, in our classes, we'll show you evidence based on detailed calculation of return on interest, invested capital, and return on equity. Now, it's not surprising, ladies and gentlemen, that Berkshire Hathaway uses return on invested capital to calculate growth, right? Because growth for any company or REIT is based on ROIC multiplied by the investment rate. Okay, in our classes, we help you to actually calculate growth of REITs, which is based on return on invested capital plus the investment rate. Now, you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the whole idea of REITs, you know, raising money and investing in the markets, you know, is every time they raise your capital, they okay, pay you back dividend and they take back money from you, okay? But are they investing in a way that benefit you as the REIT shareholder? If it doesn't, then why do you want to put more money in the REIT, right? Or you wait for it to sell off and then you actually go in and buy on the cheap, as what well I did on Fraser Center Point Trust, which Mr. A basically was asking. Uh, Mr. YJ, it is a creative, is one thing, you know, uh, but it's not uh, the answer we're looking for because, ladies and gentlemen, in our classes, you know, we always question what the rate managers tell you as a shareholder because based on the performa numbers, every merger, every, um, Every uh, acquisition is almost positive, except for the Savannah ones, okay? In fact, you can lease with the number of heads, which are the REITs, mergers, or acquisitions, they are not positive, 
right? So all of them are always positive, but in actual fact, to what extent are they positive, you know, or accretive is something we do in our classes. For example, for example, in our classes previously, we have shown that AIM's APAC read acquisition of their latest, you know, uh, uh, supermarket in Australia, you know, will not be accretive if they do not use perpetual securities for that acquisition. Anyway, so of course, if you look at the performance numbers, they show it positive because, you know, perpetual securities is being classified 50% as loan and 50% as equity, right? So it's practically a no-brainer to therefore show that it will be positive. But a shrewd REIT investor, you must know and be able to see through the numbers whether it is actually positive. Okay, CJ says, uh, larger REIT would potentially bring benefits such as better trading liquidity, lower cost of capital, greater feasibility to acquire larger properties to drive inorganic uh, growth. Well, very close CJ. Uh, CJ says, <clears throat> better trading liquidity. Uh, that's left to be seen, <laughs> okay, uh, because this is what they put in their trading materials, you know, CJ. So uh, if you look at the trading liquidity for the past mid acquisition, for example, like Escort, Fraser Lock, it didn't really improve Fraser uh, uh, substantially, okay? Two is lower cost of capital, not really, okay, especially now the interest rate are going to go up. But this is a, a reason that most REIT mergers have actually put forward. In fact, for ARA and ARA, ARA logos and ESR, it could be, there's a very high chance because uh, the, the, of the structure that management has actually put forward. For example, kudos to the uh, management team because they actually, when they merged and came on uh, and merged with Viva, they expanded the number of bankers from five to 11 currently. So most of the bankers are giving them very good competitive rates. In fact, as a matter of fact, the cost of funds for ESR has come down from close to 4% four years ago, now to about 2.5%, okay? So uh, for this merger, they have put it forward. And then they say is that feasibility will acquire larger properties to drive in organic growth, right? Yes, this is actually, in fact, you've got more like two out of three correct. So CJ, so I think I will give the book to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Pauline says, are bank shares overvalued now or will they go up more since interest rates are going up? Um, well, Pauline, this is a different from REITs as well. We're discussing our technology in our classes, but uh, just a matter of fact, uh, uh, since you asked and we are more than happy to help you answer, uh, bank shares, are they overvalued or will they go up? since interest rates are going up? Well, it used to be that banks, again, the cost of funds, you know, is actually, uh, will be impacted if interest rates go up. But that's because they are able to then do the pass on to, to, a, to, a share, uh, to the deposited holders. But you see the deliberalization of banks these days, you know, uh, and if you look at, for example, in the US, you know, the results of Bank America that came in, Citigroup, uh, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley, you know, have shown clearly that higher interest rates actually benefit banks, uh, uh, not substantially, but help them in the underwriting uh, abilities. So if you're talking about basically US banks, it says yes. On Singapore banks itself, hmm, you know, the usual impact of interest rate increases, you know, may not have a 100% flow through for the Singapore banks. You know, so if you're thinking of Singapore banks based on past track record, that is the case. But of course, for greater, now this is again, not giving investment advice. You know, this is just sharing you the historical of how the banks have performed during past interest rate cycle, as well as basically the recent uh, set of results in the first two weeks of this year by the US banks that report so far. Okay, so, Hope everyone enjoyed. In fact, we will have another session like this next week, you know, for our classes. For those of you all who don't have time to attend our classes, then of course, do come up for our YouTube video. Subscribe to our Gabriel Liap YouTube channel. Do into our articles every month, you know, these are free. And of course, you know, uh, thanks again to my publisher, Marshall Cavendish, for sponsoring this particular event. 
And then uh, come next month, we'll have a similar event like this, another book preview. Maybe by then we can show you the Chinese book in detail and have you a more formal session. For those of you who enjoyed this session, please tell your friends about it. Tell them how good Marshall Cavendish is. So if you want to go and write a book like what I did, do go to Marshall Cavendish. Now, you want to make more money and become a millionaire, do join our classes. And once again, Gongsi Vatai, Happy New Year, everybody, from me and my wife. Yeah, cheers. Hi. So um, if you would like to be updated more about our future coming events and classes, just follow us on our social media page. The, we have Facebook, LinkedIn, and subscribe to Gabriel's YouTube channel. All right. So we'd like to thank everyone. Have a wonderful, blessed uh, Water Tiger year. See you. Thank you. See you soon.